extensively here on the show, the war in Ukraine, looking at, of course, what's been unfolding on the battlefield and the geopolitics associated with it. But one of the big stories that hasn't gone reported at all is the digital transformation of Ukraine. What is going on here? In fact, many people don't know that the Zelensky government has created a laboratory, turned Ukraine into what they call a digital transformation. In fact, Zelensky himself has even set up an entire ministry dedicated to advancing this digital transformation. What is this all about? Redacted correspondent Dan Cohen just filed this investigation. Watch. On January 19th, USA Director Samantha Power appeared at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland to promote a digital identification smartphone app called DIA. And one of the most incredible things that Ukraine has developed over the last few years is an app called DIA that now delivers 120 services to the people of Ukraine. Standing next to power was Mikhailo Fedorov, Ukraine's Minister of Digital Transformation and Vice Prime Minister. Fedorov is a graduate of NATO's educational program in Ukraine and the World Economic Forum's Young Leader Program. He's the key figure implementing what is known as Ukraine's Digital Transformation, a program to transform the country into an electronic state controlled by Silicon Valley, big tech corporations, and U.S. military intelligence. Thank you to the USAID team because uh, uh, we got support uh, for DIA and uh, we are ready to share our expertise with other countries because uh, digitalization is foundation of transparency and of democracy. The DIA app is a central plank in this process. It digitizes and centralizes documents, records, and government and business transactions all into a digital identity. This offers an unprecedented system of surveillance and control. According to the World Economic Forum, digital identity determines what products, services, and information we can access, or conversely, what is closed off to us. The DIA project is funded primarily by U.S. aid as part of its larger project to implement digital ID systems throughout the world. It was first introduced by Volodymyr Zelensky in May 2019, just four days into his presidency. Zelensky and Fedorov officially launched DIA in February 2020. Zelensky plans to hold elections through this app. This is endorsed by the Atlantic Council as how Ukraine can greatly reduce the scope for election fraud. However, the American Association for the Advancement of Science issued an open letter in April 2020 warning of possible vote manipulation and numerous security vulnerabilities. This is even more fraught given that Zelensky has since banned all opposition parties. DIA privatizes government services, implemented through a series of memorandums of understanding with Western corporations, E-banking is predicated on an agreement with Visa. An electronic census is run by Apple. Google personnel manage DIA. Fedorov commented, Google services have become our infrastructure. The center of what Zelensky calls the digital state is not a physical place. It is a financial creation called DIA City. Zelensky also established an e-residency program that does not require physical presence inside Ukrainian borders and is off limits to stateless persons and Russians. Everyone is at the center of such a state, no matter who or where they are. Everyone who wants to change and be an agent of change. It is a new generation of state, open to the whole world. DIA and the digital transformation have been promoted through culture, too. Through global crises, the digital transformation has advanced. Just weeks after DIA's launch, coronavirus panic swept the world. Ukraine implemented severe lockdowns, banned public gatherings, levied thousand-dollar fines, and prosecuted lockdown violators as criminals. Some cities dug mass graves to scare the public into compliance. Amid this climate of terror, 
DIA issued its first push notifications informing users about the draconian new restrictions. Vaccine passports were introduced. Those who complied with vaccine mandates were eligible for a one-time payment of 1,000 hryvnia, equivalent to 38 American dollars. If you are a full-time citizen or a citizen of Ukraine, you have a green COVID certificate of DIA. You can use a card for the support of the bank partner and the credit. You can use a card for the cultural events, the events and the events, or the sports and fitness centers, and the books. At the 2021 World Economic Forum, Mikhailo Fedorov openly admitted that the COVID-19 crisis was used to speed up the digital transformation. The pandemic uh, has accelerated our progress. First of all, people are really now demanding digital online services. People have no choice but to trust technology. By early February 2022, DIA had encroached upon all aspects of Ukrainian life. As the U.S. and NATO pushed Ukraine into war with Russia, the digital transformation took a new dimension. A government advisor told Wired magazine, We have restructured the Ministry of Digital Transformation into a clear military organization. The government rolled out several new wartime features for DIA, among them, feature for Ukrainians to report Russian troop movements and anonymously accuse others of being collaborators. Since the first days of invasion, we've seen how Ukrainians with their bare hands try to stop Russian tanks. How brave and fearless our people are. This gave us the idea that taking a photo of Russian troops and hardware shouldn't be a big deal for them at all. Instead, our army will, army will receive truthful and updated information on the enemy's positions. That's how we came up with our next wartime service. The team at Ministry of Digital Transformation created a chatbot, Yevog, the enemy in the Telegram Messenger. With this chatbot, Ukrainians can report the movement of occupants and collaborators and capture the location of enemy equipment with just a few clicks. The main difference from all other existing bots is authorization through DIA app. Chatbot has become a digital weapon of every Ukrainian in occupied territories. The government payment system expanded, making digitization permanent. This service is expanding. When the war began, it started being available to Ukrainians who had to move away from hostile territories. In the future, all social assistance Ukrainians will receive through e-aid. If you're anything like me, you love spending time scrolling through your feed. the movement of occupants and collaborators and capture the location of enemy equipment with just a few clicks. The main difference from all other existing bots is authorization through DIA app. Chatbot has become a digital weapon of every Ukrainian in occupied territories. The government payment system expanded, making digitization permanent. This service is expanded. When the war began, it started being available to Ukrainians who had to move away from hostile territories. In the future, all social assistance Ukrainians will receive through e-aid. The wartime transformation also included a single 24-7 government-approved news outlet, giving DIA users a steady feed of propaganda. Entertainment features were added, too. These new features in app continue to develop into other cool services for citizens, such as an opportunity to watch the national Eurovision contest and then choose the winner. Everything available in DIA. For Samantha Power, this was a great achievement. DIA is an app that was originally designed to simplify bureaucracy, and it has now been repurposed by Ukrainians for wartime. Its wild success in such a short period of time in getting used by citizens is an accomplishment. As Russian attacks decimated the cellular network, USAID purchased and delivered to Ukraine tens of thousands of Elon Musk's Starlink satellite broadband terminals, 
allowing DIA to continue to operate. You can't underestimate satellite communications in this war. This is our new critical infrastructure in liberated territories and frontline areas to restore communications between people. Yet the Starlink terminals have failed from energy shortages. This is one of many weaknesses of the DIA platform. In January 2022, DIA was breached and millions of Ukrainians' personal data was compromised. The Ministry of Digital Transformation created a troll farm to defend itself on social media. The more destruction in Ukraine, the more the digital transformation advanced. In October 2020, Ukraine signed an agreement with Microsoft to move DIA to its cloud server. Mikhailo Fedorov stressed that the data center must be inside Ukrainian borders. This process accelerated ahead of the Russian military operation as Ukraine uploaded critical government data to cloud centers based in Ukraine, facilitated by Silicon Valley giants Amazon, Oracle, and others. A week before the Russian military operation, Ukraine's parliament passed legislation to allow government and private sector data to be moved to cloud storage abroad. The day the operation began, Amazon met with Ukrainian government officials. They began transferring critical government data to Amazon's military-grade hard drives called snowballs. These hard drives were then transferred from Ukraine to Poland and onto secret locations where they were uploaded to cloud centers controlled by Amazon. Liam Maxwell, head of government transformation at Amazon Web Services, called the transfer government in a box, literally. This is probably one of the smartest and the most strategic decisions ever made. At this point of my presentation, I want to express my gratitude to global big tech companies such as Amazon Web Services, Oracle, Google, Microsoft, and my sincere respect to the Polish government on this matter as well. Support we have received and keep receiving with storage and all kinds of services free of charge, Save Digital Ukraine. In the aftermath, Fedorov awarded Amazon with Ukraine's Peace Prize. Thank you for the support. Ooh, the rich ice dolce de leche latte. Google CEO Eric Schmidt commented on the data transfer, saying, The war gave everybody a political excuse to do the right thing, suggesting the crisis was used as a pretext for a voluntary transfer of sovereignty. This process has continued as Ukraine has sent tens of millions of gigabytes of data from at least several dozen government ministries, universities, and financial institutions. As the war grinds on, Fedorov jet sets around the United States and Europe, promoting the takeover of his country by Western corporations. Today, I want to show you how technology lets you protect the entire democratic world and how each of you can test your product in Ukraine, capitalize on your company, and join our victory. Samantha Power and USAID are seeking to implement DIA-style digital IDs in other countries. We are now looking at taking this DIA app and seeing whether other countries where leaders were elected on anti-corruption platforms in places like Zambia, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, uh, whether this app you know, can, can actually be exported and become a tool. Estonia, which has long been experimenting with digital government, is implementing its own version of DIA, as is Poland. As for the United States, USA Deputy Isabel Coleman wrote on Twitter that she is envious of the app, saying, who doesn't long to be able to one-click a new driver's license, suggesting digital ID will be rolled out domestically. Through digital transformation, national sovereignty is becoming a relic of the past replaced by avatar states that are managed by a supranational technocratic elite and military intelligence. Ukraine is the test case. And joining us now is Dan Cohen, redacted correspondent with the details on this report. Unbelievable. So, Dan, there's a lot of details in this report. What stood out to you as you started your investigation? Well, what I really wanted to show is how Ukraine, through its loss of sovereignty dating back to the coup in 2014 that the U.S. of course orchestrated has been used as a laboratory to advance this so-called digital transformation, which as we saw is really a process of voluntarily handing over sovereignty, not only state sovereignty, but also privacy and rights to the U.S. government, the behemoths of Silicon Valley, like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, that 
I mean, these Silicon Valley behemoths are essentially more powerful than nation states and don't answer to anyone. Ukraine is one of many countries that are on similar paths, but first COVID and then war, which are manufactured crises, have been used to, they've been exploited to advance this process. So Ukraine is the furthest along. Um, so that's kind of one of the, the really, the, I think the important takeaway. Another thing we have to ask is how much is this digitalization a driver for what seems like permanent U.S. support for war in Ukraine? Because Ukraine is being used as a laboratory where this technology is being exported to countries like Estonia, to Poland, sort of the, the former uh, the post-Soviet states of Eastern Europe that have the weakest sovereignty and ability to, to regulate and keep out foreign power, how much of this, this process is the driver for ongoing war in Ukraine? Obviously, regime change in Russia and the, the dismemberment of Russia is a top priority. But what I wonder is, like, you know, what is 1A and one is, what is 1B? Are they, I mean, or are they just really inseparable? It is interesting, too, because we've seen societies transformed with digital, well, with passports, right? We saw this, of course, in Crimea and the stamping of passports. Basically, you know, you're no longer Russian. You're now Ukrainian. Here you go, stamp. And uh, this is, we can see this, and the, the, the move towards this all, like all digital sort of passport, vaccine passport strategy where everything is digitized, you really can, you know, exert power and influence by, by mobile by mobilizing this in a digital way. Exactly. And, and it's all it's all done through fear propaganda. I mean, I showed how Ukraine actually dug mass graves in order to scare their population into compliance with the COVID regime, into observing lockdowns, which of course were then used to roll out the the COVID injections. Um, and then and then anyone and then you had to you had to get a COVID passport. You had to get a vaccine passport if you want to participate in society. Similarly, how you had to do that in the United States, but in Ukraine to an even more extreme degree. And you had to have it for international travel. So so much of this is based on people uh, being scared. So they shut down their critical thinking skills and they go along with the program. And also, it's marketed as convenience like this right. is all this this digital it'll, it'll make your life making everything it'll make your life so much better right you don't have to worry it just everything is digital you don't need paper money anymore because it'll give you covid if you touch it um so just you, you everything is digital we'll be able to track everything you won't have to even worry about it because we've got all your health records and everything is digital so it's it's all about convenience that's how they market it Exactly. Exactly. So, it's, and I mean, I think of like, you know, to a cow going into the slaughterhouse, the conveyor belt looks pretty convenient, I guess. Wow, I don't even have to walk, but we know how that ends. So right. maybe it's kind of an extreme comparison, but I think it, it holds up that we really need to be skeptical and push back against, um, against this whole digitalization program that's going on in not only in Ukraine, but in the United States, in Europe, they're trying to push it in Africa, um, all over the world, and and understand that this is not for our benefit, that this is the, for the benefit benefit of the technocratic elite, Silicon Valley, uh, you know, the billionaire uh, oligarchy, the, the tiny minority um, of billionaires that really are running the world. Right. It's more profits for them. It's much harder to make a transaction in cash if you have to go and pay for something with cash. The barrier to entry, you know, is much more difficult. It's so much easier for you to blink your eyes and a package shows up at your door and you never even see the money because it's all digital. It's all tied and very, very convenient for them. Dan Cohen, great to see you. 